Hello everyone, I am Gyan and you are learning Computer Science with Python for class 11th. In this video, we are going to learn about evolution of computer in human history. Evolution of computer. See, computers have evolved from the very basic calculator to modern day complex microprocessor. In earlier days, the computers were just simple calculators and nowadays you know how complex the processors are. You know about the Intel, you know about the AMD, you know that how complex processors they are making. So computer have evolved a lot. In this video we are going to see the history of evolution of computer and we are also going to see few basic principles which are still being used by the modern computers. This is the timeline that how computers evolved. The story starts from 500 BC. This was about 3000 years ago. People have invented an abacus computer. That was the mechanical device capable of doing some arithmetic calculations like adding two whole numbers etc. After the 500 BC, the other major change comes in 1642. In 1642, they have invented something a mechanical calculator known as Pascal calculator. This calculator was also called Pascaline. This calculator do addition and subtraction of two numbers directly and multiplication and division through the repeated addition and subtraction. So the Pascal calculator was little bit more advanced than the Abacus calculator. In 1834, there was another major change that was analytic engine. Charles Babbage. Charles Babbage is also called the father of computer. So Charles Babbage invented something called analytical engine. That was a mechanical computing device for inputting, processing, storing and displaying the output. This analytical engine was looking very much like modern day computer because that analytic engine was accepting the input was processing on the accepted input, was storing and displaying the result as the output. Okay, So this analytic engine was the first form of the basic modern computer. That's why Mr. Charles Babbage is known as father of computer. After 1834, in 1819, there was another major change. That was tabulating machine. Mr. Herman Hollerith, hopefully I am pronouncing the name correctly, H-E-R-M-A-N-H-O-L-L-E-R-I-T-H. Mr. Herman Hollerith designed a tabulating machine for summarizing the data stored on the punch cards. Okay, means you had to store data on the punch card and then give it to the tabulating machine. It is considered to be the first step towards programming because storing the data on the punch card and giving it to the machine for calculation was something called programming. You have written a program on the punch card and given it to the machine. The another major big change in the computer happened in 1937 by Mr. Alan Turing. Mr. Turing given a Turing machine and here the modern day computer was start evolving out of these very small type of computers. The Turing machine concept was general purpose programmable machine that was capable of solving any problem by executing the program stored on the punch cards. So you have the punch card, you store the program on the punch card, give it to the machine and say the machine to execute that program on the punch card. Turing machine is the first theoretical machine which was able to solve anything. The other breakthrough comes after just 8 years after the Mr. Alan Turing proposed Turing machine. In 1945, Mr. John Newman introduced the concept of new computer. Okay, In modern day computers, as I told you, what happens in the modern day computer? Your data and your program first goes to RAM and then the CPU picks the data and program from the RAM to execute. This model 
was introduced by Mr. John von Neumann. And this was the principle of modern day computer. So the Turing machine followed by the John Neumann principle was the base of the modern day computers. The first computer developed on the principle of Mr. John von Neumann was EDVAC and then ENIAC. Those computers were developed based on the concept that program and data both will be stored in the memory before they picked up by the processing unit. But from the 1819 in tabulating machine to 1945 John Newman principle. In this era, we have just changed the concept of computer. Initially, we had the programs in the punch card which were used by the processing unit for the calculation. But in 1945, Mr. John Newman proposed that a computer will have a dedicated memory and the processing unit will take the data from that dedicated memory. So all the changes from 1890 to 1945 are the conceptual changes. That how a computer will work, a change on that basis. In 1945, we were still using something called vacuum tube. So implementing a computer was a very big task. The computer was very huge in size because of use of vacuum tubes. You can see the size of ENIAC computer. As you can see, this is the ENIAC computer. You can see how big it is. So the ENIAC computer was too huge to be used by a normal people. And reason for this big size was the vacuum tubes which we were using up to 1945. But after 1945, humans were able to discover something called transistor. And transistors were relatively small in size. Vacuum tubes were replaced by transistors. Transistors were developed at the Bell Labs and the transistors were using semiconductor materials. If you don't know what the semiconductor materials are, you will learn it in your modern physics syllabus. Therefore, the introduction of transistors, which are consisted of semiconductor materials, was a big change in the field of computers. Transistors made the computer very small in size. But still, in 1947, we were not in the modern era of computer. The modern era of computer started with the evolution of integrated circuit, that means IC. See, an IC is a silicon chip which contains entire electronic circuit in a very small area. That means multiple transistors can be packed together on a single IC. The size of computer drastically reduced because of ICs. Because as I told you, millions of transistors can be fabricated on a single IC circuit, single integrated circuit. That's why because of integrated circuit, our computer size was reduced drastically. Your modern day CPU is just an IC. Means the modern day CPU is just one integrated circuit having billions of transistors fabricated on it. Okay, so what is CPU? CPU is an integrated circuit. So I think this is very easy to understand that how integrated circuit has reduced our computer size. See what we were using, we were using vacuum tubes to create computer which was huge in size and very less effective in the terms of calculation, in the terms of speed, in the terms of efficiency. With the transistor, we stopped using the vacuum tube and that made our computer smaller than before and fabricating billions of transistors on a single integrated circuit makes our computer drastically small and that was the benefit of using the integrated circuit. So hopefully now you know how the computers are evolved from 500 BC to 2021. After 1970, the modern era of computers started and humans have started fabricating more transistors on the integrated circuits and with high number of transistors we had more powerful integrated circuits 
so with the increase in the number of transistors per unit area of integrated circuits we again have different generations of modern day computer we will see about the generation of modern day computer after the evolution of integrated circuit in a later video named microprocessor and microcontroller so the modern day computer started with the integrated circuit and even after the integrated circuit we started packing fabricating more number of transistors on the single circuit and based on how many transistors you have on the single circuit we had gone through multiple generations of the computer that we will see in the later video named microprocessor and microcontroller now the question is what was the von neumann architecture which has affected that much the modern day computers so as you can see here according to mr von neumann everything which input to the computer first goes to memory and the cpu picks that data or program from the memory for execution the von neumann architecture is shown in this picture it consists of central processing unit that means cpu for processing of arithmetic and logical instructions as we have seen in the earlier videos and this computer has a memory to store data and programs okay so this computer has a central processing unit and a memory so whatever data comes to this computer first resides in the memory before it goes to the cpu and whatever the data has to go to the output first have to be resides in the memory before it goes to the output and based on this principle the enic computer that means electronic numerical integrator and computer was evolved that was the first binary programmable computer based on this von neumann architecture now i told you that our modern day computer starts evolving after the evolution of integrated circuits integrated circuit was made in 1970 so after first integrated circuit in 1970 large scale integration of electronic circuit allowed integration of complete cpu on single chip means the complete alu au and control unit everything together on a single chip this kind of cpu was first evolved in 1970 after the introduction of ics the integrated circuits such cpus were called large scale integration and such cpu which was made on a single chip on a single ic was called a microprocessor so you know that in the decade of 1970s you had ics and your whole cpu was now on a single ic chip on a single integrated circuit chip called microprocessor moore's law predicted the exponential growth in number of transistors that means this guy says mr moore sees that the number of transistors used in a ic will be doubled year by year okay means suppose that nowadays i am using two transistors in one chip then after few years i will be using four transistors on one ic chip after few more years i will be using eight transistors on one ic chip so that was predicted by moore so he told that now the computer will evolve by growing the number of transistors on single ic chip okay the ic chip is also called microchip and here you can see in 1970s ic was evolved and then you can see how many transistors per integrated circuits we are using year by year means in 1970s we were using around 1000 transistor on a single chip but in 2021 you can see how many transistors we are using on a single chip so that was predicted by mr moore he told that we will be using more number of transistors on a single chip over the year and we are doing it so in 1980s the processing power of computers increased exponentially by integrating around 3 million components on a small sized ic when i say chip you just understand it ic okay chip means ic so we were able to integrate 3 million components on a single ic termed as very large scale integration 
means VLSI. So whatever was discovered in 1970s was called LSI means large scale integration. But in 1980, when we were able to accommodate 3 million components on a single chip, we termed this technology as very large scale integration. See, nowadays we are not improving by the concept of computer. Now we are improving by the hardware, means how much we can accommodate in a small size chips. That's how nowadays computers are evolving. Further advancement in technology has made it feasible to fabricate high density of transistors and other components. And we were able to store approximately 106 components on a single IC called super large scale integration. So after VLSI, we had something called SLSI, super large scale integration. So we have LSI, large scale integration. We have VLSI, very large scale integration. Then we have SLSI, super large scale integration. And what are the difference between all these three technologies? We had more number of transistors per unit integrated circuit. That's what the difference between these three are. IBM introduced its first personal computer for the home user in 1981. And Apple introduced Macintosh in 1984. But the PC, PC means personal computer, the computer used by the normal user at their home, that is called PC. The popularity of personal computer emerged with the introduction of graphical user interface means the graphical user interface based interaction with computer. I think we already have talked about graphical user interface. So when the operating system based on graphical user interface came in market by the Microsoft and other operating system vendors, then the popularity of computers at home got increased. Popularity of PC means personal computers got increased. After that in 1990s, the World Wide Web comes in the picture and introduction to the World Wide Web further accelerated mass usage of computers and thereafter computers have become an indispensable part of everyday life. See why you are using computer, why you are using mobile phone because first thing it is small in size, second thing it is less costly, third thing you have internet. Okay, That's why you are using your mobile phone, your smartphone. That's why you are using your laptop. So the three things made computers very popular among normal people. The first one is use of integrated circuit. The second one is graphical user interface. And the third one is World Wide Web. Now in 2021, we have excellent performing computers, which have very fast processors, very fast and huge amount of memory present on our table. But what is next? What next is about to come in the world of computers? Those things which are coming to the world of computer, those are wearable gadgets. A gadget which you can wear like clothes. Nowadays you have smart watches which is wearable, lenses, headbands, headphones, etc. But in future you can have a smart wearable. Like you can have clothes with microprocessors. So that is going to be happen in future. Apart from that, smart appliances are becoming a part of Internet of Things. Internet of Things means everything in day to day life are connected to Internet. OK, so that is called the Internet of Things. And such devices which are connected to Internet, such day to day devices which are connected to Internet, they can take care of themselves. See a situation. If your refrigerator is connected to internet and the refrigerator finds some problem in it, it will automatically call a mechanic to repair it. So such things are going to be happen in future because of internet of things. And the internet of things is possible because of two other technologies. One is the web services and other one is artificial intelligence. You may not know about these technologies but these are future of computers. So hopefully you got all my points and you know that how computers have evolved 
from 500 BC to 2021 and what is going to be future of computer.